Hi everyone. I'm working on a procedural modular terrain system for my projects in Unity. When I say projects, of course I mean games, but I'm a behavioral scientist, so I wanted something that would work for behavior simulations too. In Unity, you can simulate all sorts of things, like voids, utility AI, neural networks, and kinesis. Keep an eye out on my channel for more of this kind of thing, and let me know in the comments what kind of simulations you think would be fun. In the past, I spent a lot of time working on procedural voxel terrain. I've done Minecraft-style voxels, marching cubes, and dual contouring. There were challenges. Sometimes they were interesting. Like, this was one of my first attempts at marching cubes terrain. No idea what happened here. Looks kind of neat, though. Other times... <laughs> Well, okay, I know, I know what it looks like. I promise, I promise. It's not what I was going for. I knew I wanted to move away from the kind of voxel complexity I've spent far too much time on. And then I learned about wave function collapse. No, not this wave function collapse. This wave function collapse. Hey, don't get mad at me, I, I didn't name it. So this method can generate 2D textures from input or generate 3D worlds from modules. The texture version looks something like this. You saw the 3D version at the beginning of the video. Let me tell you how I got here. I was starting a new side project, as one often does, and at the time I was really into pixel art and classic top-down games like Legend of Zelda. I like the fun little perspective tricks they use, like look at how the walls are angled to get better visibility. They even angle the models in some of the top-down 3D games. I wanted to make a 3D procedural mesh that had the same top-down pixel art vibe and angled walls. And I did, and I like the overall look at the first attempt. It helps that I'm borrowing a lot from textures like Castlevania, Zelda, and Metroid. I'm also using a pixel art shader on the characters. While I was working on this, I got really distracted by art style, and maybe I'll talk about that in another video. My next task was to remove gaps between adjacent blocks. At first, I tried a custom extruded version of marching squares, and it worked really well until it didn't. Then I tried marching cubes. Remember how I said I didn't want to use voxels? <coughs> well, here I am again using voxels. It did exactly what I wanted, but it was so much work. Let me tell you a little bit about marching cubes, and you can see where I went wrong. Here I have a 3D grid of voxels. The dark voxels represent solid material, while the light voxels represent open space. You can kind of imagine what the overall shape will be, especially if I don't show the open voxels. They're still there, they're just not being shown. You might be tempted to place a cube everywhere there's a solid voxel. This is the voxel approach used by Minecraft. It's nice, but you can really only get cubic shapes. The marching cubes method uses a cell of eight voxels, one in each corner. Remember, the open voxels are still there too. A mesh is built inside the cell to separate the solid and open voxels. Here, a flat ground mesh is created since there are four voxels at the bottom of the cell. In the next cell, an angled ramp is needed to cover the solid voxels. This cell has all solid voxels, so it's completely underground and doesn't need a mesh. Now we create another flat ground mesh to cover the four bottom voxels, and this process continues as the cell marches through the voxel grid, creating a mesh anywhere one is needed. That's the basic process of marching cubes. There are a lot of ways to build the individual cell meshes, but generally there are 256 possible meshes that could be built. Normally you do the smart thing and find some pre-calculated marching cubes mesh tables online to help out, but I'm not always that smart. I coded all of this manually, and I didn't even get to use my old marching cubes code. It was a lot of work, and I don't recommend this at all. Uh, I even have way more than 256 cases for all these special rules. I just wanted more control over the types of shapes that I could get than the standard marching cubes rules would provide. I wanted both blocky shapes and beveled shapes. Eventually, with my version of the algorithm, I was able to get pretty much what I wanted. But I still didn't like it. It was weeks of work and I regret all of it. I just didn't like it. What really got me was the texturing. I was trying a lot of different styles, but texturing is one area where voxel algorithms are weak. Since the mesh is built procedurally, you have much less artistic control than if you built and textured a mesh in a 3D modeling program. So looking back at this, it's not all bad, but 
I just didn't like it. It wasn't really what I wanted. And I was frustrated. But I did find an interesting solution. I was looking at Twitter, and you can follow me there too, and I saw a post from Oscar Stahlberg, the creator of Bad North and Townscaper. He was sharing a devlog from the creators of Phantom Brigade, where they discussed their procedural terrain system. So first, check out this game. I've played some of their other games, but not this one. It does look really cool, though. They used a modular system for their buildings that I really like. Here's their post on modular buildings. Link in the description. They create 3D tiles based on Marching Cube's rules and assemble them using a modified Marching Cube's algorithm. But because they create the meshes by hand in a 3D modeling program, they have full artistic control of the shapes and materials they use. And it really works great. I really like the idea of making 3D tiles instead of using the standard Marching Cube's shapes, but I also didn't want to be restricted by Marching Cube's rules at all. I dug a little deeper and I started reading more of Oscar Stahlberg's posts. He uses a method called Wave Function Collapse. Yes, we finally get to it. In Oscar Stahlberg's Bad North, Wave Function Collapse is used to generate these cute little islands. They look great, and more importantly, they don't look anything like you would get from Marching Cube's. In Townscaper, you build these little towns. That's it. Everything's assembled with Wave Function Collapse, and it looks nothing like Marching Cubes. It's fun and super cheap, so check it out. Here's how Wave Function Collapse works. First, you create modules. Here I have a simple 2D grass tile. The grass tile connects to the Little Trees tile, and vice versa. I'm creating matches for each tile based on adjacency. The Big Trees tile connects to the Little Trees tile, but not to grass. Sand connects to grass, but not to trees. And finally, water connects to sand. Let's also assume that every tile can connect to itself. Now that the modules are ready, we need a grid of cells. Initially, each cell can contain any of the modules. We can say that the domain of each cell initially includes all possible modules. Now we pick a random cell, and randomly assign a module. The cell has now been collapsed. We also know how to reduce the domains of the neighboring cells. We know that the little trees module can only be placed near other little trees, big trees, and grass. Reducing the domains of the neighboring cells might also reduce the domains of the neighbor's neighbors. When we collapse one cell, we need to propagate the information to all cells that should change. Now we pick a new cell to collapse it should probably be a cell with a small domain. Each time we collapse a cell, we propagate the new constraints to adjacent cells. Watch how the domain sizes decrease each time we collapse a new cell. I'll let this play out a bit so you can see the process. And I'll also speed it up a bit too. And that's it. That's wave function collapse. <laughs> Here's the same tile set on a much bigger map. The process is nearly instant when it isn't being animated, but I also really like watching the algorithm work. One of the nice things about this method is that you can set whatever connectivity rules you want, and the algorithm will figure out how to put things together, for the most part. Okay, so that was a simple set of tiles for this demonstration. Here's a more serious set of pixel art tiles. I was really into pixel art for a bit while I was working on this, I'm not great at it, but it's a style I'd like to get better at. The little worn down pathways in this one are kind of interesting. And I like how the flowers turned out. I have some rules here that clump the flowers and weeds together, but don't group those with the trees. It's all about setting rules for how the tiles can connect. You have a lot of creative freedom. Here's some 3D sets I've been working with. The algorithm works pretty much the same in 3D. I'm following general Marching Cube's design guidelines for creating my modules, but I can also ignore a lot of it or add my own rules too. It's really nice to be unrestricted by voxel meshing rules. For this one, I was playing around with small river and waterfall modules that always flow south. That's the kind of thing you can't do with Marching Cubes. And here, the trees might look a little weird during generation, but that's because the tree mesh is randomly picked from a few different options when the mesh is built. During animation, the mesh is built each update. Randomly picking a mesh to use 
means I can have one module that can have multiple looks. It would be much less performant to have one module per tree type. Okay, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next video, I'll go into technical details about how wave function collapse works and about how my own code works. Please do all the normal YouTube things, like, subscribe, hit the bell, swipe right, tell your mom you love her, reach out to an old friend, but also let me know what you're thinking in the comments. It would be nice to talk to people with similar interests. All right, that's all for now. See you next time.